Fox Sports. We are Black Fox. We are Minnesota. It's been all about offense for the Twins so far in this series. A 4-10 average, 32 runs scored. They set a target field record with 20 here in the series opener Friday night. Followed it up with 12 earlier today in the first game of a doubleheader. But tonight they will face longtime Tiger ace Justin Verlander. 9-1 and one in his last 13 starts against the Twins with an ERA of just over 2. Meanwhile, the Twins will hand the ball to rookie right-hander Trevor May, who makes his third big league start in the first two plus one relief appearance, 13 walks and only three strikeouts in nine innings pitched. He's trying to earn his first major league win. I'm Anthony LaPanta at Target Field as the Twins go for the sweep against the three-time defending AL Central champions, the Detroit Tigers. Minnesota looking to make it back-to-back -back wins in the doubleheader and three in a row in this series. Earlier today, it was offense again for the Twins. Joe Maurer had a big day with a couple of hits and three runs batted in. Maurer's hit in 22 of his last 24 games and has driven in 22 runs over that stretch, six in this series. Jordan Schaefer had one of the two triples for the Twins in this game. A bases clearing job in the second, part of a six run second inning that broke it open for Minnesota. And how about Kenny Vargas? Two doubles for the second consecutive game, a career high five RBI. Only two rookies have driven in more runs in a game this season. Ryan Presley came out in relief behind starter and winner Johan Pino with two scoreless innings and Minnesota rolled to a 12-4 win that gives them the opportunity to sweep the doubleheader here tonight. Up next, the Minnesota offense against Justin Verlander and more on Kenny Vargas who's been one of baseball's best this month.
North is presented by Menards. Save big money on all your home improvement needs at Menards. By Budweiser. Great times are waiting. Grab some Buds. By Dodge. Hurry in and get a great deal during the Dodge Summer Clearance event. And by Samuel Adams for the love of beer. Kenny Vargas and the Twins will hope to make it three in a row over the Detroit Tigers and Vargas instrumental in the win this afternoon. He's been instrumental in a lot of things for the last three weeks for the Twins. Twenty two runs batted in in his first twenty one major league games and a good Saturday evening to you from Target Field. Dick Raymer along with Burt Blylevin. Kenny Vargas has become kind of the talk of the Twins a slugger a switch hitter power from both sides of the plate. And sometimes when you take a glimpse of the future, it's a little frustrating this time of the year. I don't think Twins fans are complaining at all. No, not at all. When you look at this young man, only 24 years old from Puerto Rico, you know, he's making the jump from double A. Twins did not know how he would do at the major league level, but the numbers have spoken for themselves. My goodness, four home runs in 21 ball games, the high average. And the biggest thing, he is driving in runs, not only with base hits, but extra base hits. He was the first baseman this afternoon. He's in the lineup tonight as the designated hitter as the Twins hope to continue to score a lot of runs against the Tigers. Sends one out. I think he just drove okay, it out of the ball. Lofton to deep right field. And back to back to back days for Arcia hitting home runs. And scored a dozen this afternoon without Arcia in the lineup. He had a little medical situation regarding his infant son. Everything is fine, and he's. On his way out to right field now with the Twins hoping to make it three in a row over Brad Osmus and the Tigers who came in here struggling a little bit. They had uh, lost first place to the Kansas City Royals and uh, frankly put they've looked terrible in the first two games. Yeah the pitching uh, you know usually dictates how you're going to play in the first two games not so good as far as the starters. The Menards batting order for the Tigers in game three. Ian Kinsler, Tory Hunter, Miguel Cabrera. Victor Martinez, J.D. Martinez, Nick Castellanos, Brian Holiday, Eugenio Suarez, and Rajay Davis. 
And for the first time in his young career, Trevor May will face the Detroit Tigers for the first time. And if he wears a Twins uniform, he'll be seeing the, a lot of the Detroit Tigers. So hopefully the first step is a good step, making his third major league start, his fourth appearance, his second here at Target Field. Oakland for defense for the Twins. Jordan Schaefer providing some speed in left field. Danny Santana, speed in center. Oswaldo Arcia back in right field. Chris Parmalee played there this afternoon. Blue and Escobar left side of the infield. Dozier Mauer right side. And Kurt Suzuki behind the play. Chris Guccione, the home plate umpire for tonight's game, wasn't on the crew this afternoon. Eric Cooper, Tom Hallion, and Stu Sherwater, the uh, base umpires. Yeah, with the uh, you know daylight devil header, the usually the umpire behind home plate, you know, whether game one or two gets uh, at least uh, one of the games off. And for Trevor May, this is a big start. You know the Twins have been scoring runs. It's important for him to do exactly what he did in that Kansas City game when he started the ball game off nicely. He walked Butler in the first inning. Gordon got a base hit. He walked. He worked out of it. Threw three more shutout innings and then kind of control. Was his issue in the fifth inning. And it'll be Ian Kinsler to lead things off for the Tigers. They find themselves three games behind the Kansas City Royals, who are getting underway in Texas, or were that game being delayed by weather. And here's the first pitch fly ball to left. And Schaefer with the catch. Uh, Kinsler that type of hitter he's going to swing hard and hope you throw a fastball the first pitch he just got underneath that two games ago he started this series off with a home run. So a good first out on one pitch for Trevor May. Torrey Hunter getting a nice hand Torrey didn't play this afternoon. And he should here in Minnesota a lot of good memories out of the person Torrey Hunter 39 years old now but still looks like. He is 22 years old <laughs> when he came up with the Twins. One strike from May. And a fastball up and in. May has a good fastball. It's a matter of him just trusting and throwing it over. And don't try to be so fine, especially early in the ball game here, when your arm is a little bit stronger than it might be later in the ball game. So let it fly. Exactly what he did right there to Tory. He trust his fastball trust your defense and believe that more of it the power of positive thinking that you're going to do well off the plate a hard slider there by May two and two he has a fastball four seamer two seamers got a curveball just saw the hard slider that missed and a change nice pick up by Plouffe a hot two hopper Two down. You know, Jamie Hirsch was talking to Trevor May and, and saying, talking about the mental part of the game. Sometimes, you know, you start worrying about all the little things that may be in your delivery. Let it fly. Get back to basics. What got you here? What got you to the big leagues by being aggressive in the strike zone? Two down and now the designated hitter Miguel Cabrera Cabrera and Victor Martinez switching spots in the field with Cabrera the DH tonight Martinez taking over at first base yeah, good hard breaking ball right there for strike one. A high fastball gets him to chase. Yeah, Dick, it's almost the same setup as the Twins right now with Joe Maurer and also Vargas, you know, kind of switching off. Of course, Maurer playing more defense than than Vargas. He did start in game one, but with Cabrera, that little bit of a sore right ankle, it's been bothering him. So Martinez at first and Cabrera the designated hitter in game two. Maybe it's a function of relaxing. I don't believe we've seen Trevor May at 94 miles per hour like we saw on that last pitch. He's letting it go. Dribbler to third. Plenty of time for Plouffe. And a 1 2 3 first inning for Trevor May.
Bucks. They've won three in a row. Their longest losing or winning streak is four wins in a row. And they've only done that once. Ron Gart and I are hoping that tonight's the night he can extend the winning streak to four. The Menards batting order for the Twins. Danny Santana on top. Brian Dozier batting second. Joe Maurer, Kenny Vargas, Oswaldo Arcia, Trevor Plouffe, Kurt Suzuki, Eduardo Escobar, and Jordan Schaefer. Let's take a look at the Mall of America on tonight's second game starter, and that being Justin Verlander. He's never been on a disabled list. A lot of people feel he came very close because in his last start about 10 days ago, he had some irritation in that right shoulder, missed a start. He's pitched well here at Target Field. And it's been a tough season. A lot of hits for Justin Verlander, a lot of walks. So it means a lot of base runners. And a strike on the outside corner to Danny Santana. Verlander making his 26th career start against the Twins. 14 wins, eight losses in his career. Good change up there. He has all four pitches. Outstanding change up, along with a fastball that can sometimes go 92 to 97. They say he's not throwing 97 anymore, but excellent curveball if you can get it over and the slider. And Santana gets a piece of it. Like another changeup. Twins beat him earlier this year back in May in Detroit. Phil Hughes pitched a great ball game, and the Twins beat uh, the Tigers and Verlander 2 to 1. Uh, back on May 9th in Detroit. The only start that Verlander has had so far this season against the Twins. Popped up, short center. Suarez out, Davis in. And one down. Northland Ford defense for the Tigers. It's not been a strong suit for them this year. JD Martinez is in left. Rajay Davis replacing Austin Jackson in center. Corey Hunter in right. Castellano, Suarez, Kinsler, Martinez. Brian Holiday doing the catching in the nightcap. Alex Avila caught this afternoon. You know, what I found interesting about Justin Verlander is the opponents hitting against him. Right handers are hitting 326 against Verlander, where left handers are hitting only 231. Now, why would that be? Well, I asked that question to uh, Jim Price, the radio analyst for the Detroit Tigers, former catcher. And he just said he's missing his spots, he's falling behind. And having to come in with a fastball, his breaking ball to right-handers have not been as sharp to left-handers, where he can throw that curveball down and in the lefties underneath their swing. He's missing with that pitch against righties. One and one to Dozier. Two and one. He's been falling in these type counts, and then thinking that his fastball is still at 96-97. So they say right now. For a while, he's just been throwing the ball rather than pitching. And he's made a lot of major league starts. Good little cutter right there. In a fastball situation. Two and two. 147 major league wins for Verlander, former Cy Young Award winner. 88 losses. Three and two. Walks really haven't been a, a chronic problem. He's never walked more than four in a game. And even though uh, his struggles have continued here, he's lost four of his last six decisions. It hasn't been because of walks. Three and two to Dozier, who walked three times this afternoon. Fouled back. Nice, nice, nice play by this young man who brought his glove. Just down to our right. Verlander came up in 2006 with the Tigers actually 2005 for a couple starts but his first full season 2006 and he won right off the get go. Popped up. In foul ground Martinez. Near the twins dugout makes the catch two down. And we'll bring up Joe Mauer. Tonight's cold hard facts brought to you by Frost Brewed Coors Light. Look at Justin Verlander's season ERA over the last five years and it's been trending uh, uh, not good this year. No 2006 American League Rookie of the Year. He won his Cy Young Award in 2011. 
And that's also the year he won the American League MVP, six time All Star. Coincidentally or not, his innings pitch numbers have gone down over that time to the point where if he has five starts after today, he would need to average seven innings in all six of his final starts just to get to 200 innings. Here's Mowers had pretty good success against Verlander over the years and he takes strike one at the knees. Mauer 23 for 62 three home runs. Against the former Cy Young Award winner. Swing and a miss, two strikes. That fastball at 91 miles an hour. You know, a couple, three, four years ago, he would start about like this, and then by the seventh, eighth inning, he'd be throwing 96, 97. They say that's not happening anymore, so he's going to have to become more of a pitcher. And Maurer strikes out on three pitches, and Verlander, like May, has a one, two, three first inning. Minnesota to start the second and I talked to another young twins pitcher Kyle Gibson about Trevor May to get some insight on him since Gibson was really in May's shoes last year as far as being the hot prospect with a ton of expectations. So Gibson so these offered some encouragement and advice and they've talked about that fastball command being so essential for both he and Trevor May and May also told me that he looks up to Kyle and is impressed with how he has developed over the past year or so. He said that he sees that for himself. That's a good guy to model because obviously we've seen what Gibson can do and it's very exciting to start thinking about the future rotation of a Gibson and a May and other young guys like that guys. Yeah thank you very much uh, Jamie actually Gibson will be facing the Tigers tomorrow afternoon against Max Scherzer. I like the way that May went about his business in the first inning attacked the strike zone 10 pitches seven first strikes a couple ground ball outs and a fly ball out. Again, we related the story. Tony LaRusso was with us the day that May made his debut in Oakland, and uh, LaRusso was uh, very uh, terse in his assessment, not specifically of May, but any young pitcher. He's saying if you can't throw seven out of ten pitches for strikes, you don't belong up here. And uh, that's exactly what May did in the first inning. Well, hopefully he improves. You know, that opening start that he had in Oakland, he walked seven in two innings, and that's what Tony LaRusso saw. On the ground, a roller up the middle, and Martinez has a base hit. Victor Martinez has a base hit. Now J.D. Martinez will hit. Now Victor Martinez having an outstanding year offensively came into the day hitting 324 before game one, which was third best in the American League. 
J.D. Martinez has been invaluable for the Tigers in a year where Miguel Cabrera's numbers are down in the power department. J.D. Martinez has provided some pop from left field. American League Player of the Month in June. Yeah, this is a guy that was released by the Astros in spring training. Low ball one. Was with the Astros for three seasons. A 250 career hitter coming into this year, 24 home runs. He's hit 17 already this year for the Tigers. And missing again, 2 0. Oh. That's that sinking two seam fastball, trying to get a ground ball here off the bat of Martinez. Hurt Suzuki working with May now sitting on the little bit on the outer half of the plate. Good pitch. And May hit the spot two and one. May 24 years old came over to the twins in the Ben Revere trade. Along with Vance Worley. That happening in December of 2012. Now three and one. The command issues for May really seem to be magnified when he pitches from the stretch. Giving up a leadoff hit here, and now three and one to the next batter. There's really only one pitch he has to go back to right here, and that's that fastball down and away. Right field. And trapped out there. Blocked by Arcia. The Tigers get a couple of hits here to start the second inning. Well, 3 1, he left the pitch up, and Martinez hit it sharply. Had a lot of backspin on it, almost like a topspin. And Arcia came in trying to make a great catch. And you can see a little bit of slippage right there, and Arcia going down, and luckily is able to keep the ball in his glove yeah. and keep Victor Martinez at second base. I think he, if he hadn't slipped, very likely would have made the catch, but he did and he didn't. First and second, nobody out. And here is Castellanos. Breaking ball taken for ball one. And those are the pitches you have to get over early in a count, or the Tigers are just going to be sitting on that fastball. Eight pitches this inning, three for strikes. And two of those were hit for hits. Foul to the screen, one and one. And Castellanos was sitting on that fastball, even though it was middle in. He had a pretty big swing on it. One and one to the Tiger third baseman. One and two. Astriano's just 22 years old. Last year, a September call up for the Tigers. Drafted by the Tigers, their number one pick back in 2010. One and two. So far in the big leagues, May has gotten 30 outs and only three strikeouts. And he could use one here. It's a 2 2 count to Castellanos. Breaking ball lifted to left. And Schaefer with a running catch, one away. To bring up holiday. Businesses of all sizes gain a competitive edge when they bring clients to a Twins game here at Target Field. 
You can take advantage of all Target Field has to offer before the season comes to an end. From private suites to special group seating, find out how to entertain your best customers and prospective clients here at the America's Best Ballpark. Find out more at twinsbaseball.com slash groups or call 833 twins. One down, Brian Holiday, the batter. May's gotten one ground ball double play. And another miss on the first pitch. Holiday in his third season with the Tigers, a backup catcher to Alex Avilas. Who caught game one. One and oh to Holiday. And a strike one and one. Mentioned that May has just one ground ball double play so far here in the big leagues, and that's with all the base runners aboard. The two out there now bring the total to 28 men on base. And a little more than 10 innings. Just off the outside corner. Two and one. Not missing by much. Good fastball. Chris Guccione that got the black. I'm telling you, I'm taking you down there to. <laughs> there is a black on that plate. Might have to move some dirt, but there is. Breaking ball missing the outside corner, and it's three and one. No walks so far, but May fell behind Martinez. For that matter, he fell behind uh, Victor Martinez and J.D. Martinez before. Giving up the base hits. Three and one. And a liner into center. Victor Martinez is going to be able to score on a little line drive single into short center. And the Tigers with three hits now have a one nothing lead. Well, Trevor May fell behind. He had to come in with a fastball like he did to Martinez. And Holiday ends up getting an RBI, his 12th of the year. Don't get the breaking ball over consistently. They're going to sit on the fastball and Holiday just hitting it softly in the center field. And Victor Martinez scores the first run of the game. And again on that pitch, the lack of command. Suzuki was set up outside. Pitch came over the inside corner. Suarez, the batter. And a first pitch strike. And now two strikes. Suarez, 23 years old from Venezuela, in his rookie season with the Tigers. Five minor league seasons, 280 hitter in the minor leagues. Breaking ball and a strikeout. Second out of the inning. And May, who's gotten some strikeouts with his changeup, went with the breaking ball to get the strikeout here in the second. A good hard rotation on this breaking ball. In a good spot. Two out, two on, and Rajay Davis for that. Ball lifted foul over the Twins dugout. Yeah, Davis in his first season with the Tigers. Ninth major league season with the Pirates, the Giants, the Oakland A's, the Blue Jays, and now in Detroit. One strike to Davis.
Sinker down and in. In the 23rd pitch of this inning. Fastball cuts the plate in half. Good fastball down there. You don't mind giving up a run to stay away from that multi run inning. That's what happened to May in his last start. He had that fifth inning where he gave multi runs to the Kansas City Royals. Give up three runs in the fifth. One and two. And a wild pitch. And two runners will move up. Tried to overcook a fastball. Mm -hmm. First major league wild pitch for me. And now suddenly with two men in scoring position. Becomes a little bit bigger at bat. Two and two to the number nine batter. Slow breaking ball lofted to right. Arcia comes in. Three singles, the first run of the game to the Tigers. At the State Fair, inside the food building, looking for more cool new options at the fair for you to enjoy. This one's a dandy. The Sausage Sisters have come up with something that I just love. It's called the Chocolate Salami Dessert Item. And even though it looks like a salami, it's all chocolate. It's an Italian dessert item served on a cracker. you got your walnuts in there, deep, rich chocolate, and oh, yeah. It's really good. Try it. <laughs> That man is enjoying the fair. Nice I, don't, Kevin. I don't think he's left. <laughs> Kenny Vargas will lead off the second for the Twins. And he takes down and away. Ball one. Vargas. Oswaldo Arce and Trevor Plouffe to hit against Verlander here in the second inning. Verlander in his last start lasted just one inning. Gave up four hits, five runs, four of them earned, two walks. Yeah, that shoulder really bothered him. And... Uh... He's threw a couple times on the side. He kind of gave the thumbs up to Brad Ausmus that he's ready for this start here tonight. You know, in the first inning, now uh, first game, Vargas had a great game. Drove in five runs. That's a career high for this young man right here. Only his 22nd major league game here in game two. And facing a different type of pitcher than he did really in the first yes. uh, couple ball games against the Tigers. These are all new at bats for. Vargas against a, a very, very good pitcher in Verlander. Two and one. 
three and one. I will say this though, the most impressive game Vargas has had wasn't either of the first two against the Tigers. It was the final game against Corey Kluber and the Indians. Kluber pitching as well as anybody in the league right now. Vargas hit an opposite field home run and a double to left center in his two of his three at bats against Kluber. Flair to left, and that'll die for a base hit. Bring him on. Doesn't make any difference. Well, Verlander fell behind and then came in with a fastball, and Vargas just fought it off. And in the first inning, I said, Verlander now needs to become a, a pitcher. And take a look at his 3 1 fastball. And Vargas got the barrel of the bat out quickly and got it out front and hit it softly into left. What I meant is, here you're talking about a great pitcher, Justin Verlander, already. You know, Cy Young Award winner. He's had a couple no hitters. When you start losing your stuff a little bit, we talked about the out, Dick. You mentioned the innings are starting to come down. You have to really concentrate locating the fastball. That's the key. Mercy, it chases a 94 mile per hour heater. Yeah, I mean, you can get away with that once in a while, but as the game goes on, you really have to hit your spots. And Verlander will learn that. He's pitched a lot of innings. This is his 10th season with the Tigers. He's won 10 or more ball games in nine straight seasons. Line drive and Vargas is doubled off first. Kinsler caught the liner and Vargas took one step and that was too many. Yeah, good play by Martinez over there as that throw was on the outfield side, but he was able to keep his foot on the bag. Arcia waiting back nicely, hitting it back up the middle. We saw Martinez have to scoop that throw from Kinsler that wants to throw it up the line because of Vargas. For the double play. No, oh, a single, a line out for a double play, and now Plouffe with the bases empty. Driven to right center field. And that's going to run the gap. Wins hitting Verlander hard here, and Plouffe checks in at second with a two-out double. Vargas, Vargas's base hit was a soft line drive, right. but the last two balls have been hit yeah. sharply. Yeah, Arcia has smacked that ball really well, but right at Kinsler to turn the double play. But here, Trevor Plouffe, Verlander's going to challenge him, and he does right here with a fastball and. Credit Trevor Plouffe doesn't try to pull it, just taking it the other way. Another double for Trevor Plouffe now with 35 on the year. Miguel Cabrera leads the American League in doubles with 40. This is just the 20th inning that the Twins have hit in this series, and they have 17 extra base hits, 10 doubles, three triples, and four home runs. Here's Suzuki. To center. Down for a hit. Plouffe will come around and score. And the Twins have tied it up. And Suzuki's swing made solid contact. You know, a couple nights ago, or last night, when the Twins won 20 to 6, Suzuki took it 0 for 6. But here, you know, a new day. Fastball, not a lot of movement, outer half of the plate. And Suzuki driving it in the center, picking up his 50th RBI as Trevor Plouffe scores. The two outs, of course, Plouffe off with a crack of the bat. Escobar swings and misses. Escobar has absolutely smoked Tiger pitching. That base hit by Suzuki ended a little 0 for 18 little mini slump he was in. Inside. Escobar today three for five this year against Detroit. Escobar is 16 for 32. A 500, 500. 500 batting average. Good. You Good. beat me to it. Yes. One and one. Twins answer. Off of Verlander with three hits. A lot of things I learned from that California math. If I have a dollar and I give 50 cents away, what do I have left? 
Just 50 cents, but right. a, but a friend. Tough. A friend. <laughs> You've gained a friend. Two and one to Escobar. Escobar in his career has hit his best against the Tigers. Tapper foul two and two. Well, Justin Verlander over his career, this is his 26th major league start. His first 14 ball games, the Twins had some success against them, but over the last 14 starts against the Twins, he has had success against the Twins. Nine and two, ERA under two. Amazing what's happened when you uh, uh, improve the supporting cast for a good pitcher. And the Tigers have certainly done that. Also, you have to realize who Verlander faced in the last three seasons. Yeah, that's for true. The Twins. That's true. Twins have had not the best of teams on the field. Two and two to Escobar. Another foul. The approach against Verlander used to be when he was, I think, admittedly a little immature out there. The Twins would try to ambush him. He would be brilliant for four or five innings, but the Twins remained confident that if they could have an inning like this, it would blow up in his face. And many times it did just that. Two and two to Escobar. Full count with Schaefer on deck. Verlander struggling in his half of the second inning like May did in the top of this inning. This will be pitch number 16 in this inning for Verlander. Suzuki goes and it's ball four. He has retired just one of the five men he's faced here this inning. That was a line out for a double play. Well, not missing by much. Verlander taking a changeup just on the outer half of the plate. Good eye by Escobar. That's not on the black. That's not even on the gray. No. That's outside. I, I never mentioned black. Schaefer, in his first at bat this afternoon, hit a three run triple. Hitting 277 since the Twins picked him up on waivers from Atlanta. Three doubles, a triple. He's driven in five runs. Swing and a miss. Verlander start him off with a changeup. Getting ahead. First pitch strikes. Eight of nine so far for Justin Verlander. Schaefer has never faced Verlander. Missing inside one and one. And Verlander loses the baseball momentarily. What we used to see from Verlander is he would throw it at 97, 98 as hard as he could from the very beginning of the game. But what we saw over the last few years, a guy who would sit at 92, 93, and then in situations like this, men on base, the lead perhaps at stake, or the game on the line, then he would dial it up to 97. But if you don't have that anymore, then a that's big part of your game has 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 left you. Again, that's why I said he's got to start becoming more of a pitcher by hitting his spots, especially down in the strike zone. That high fastball, it's going to straighten out, especially late in the game, the fourth, fifth inning, if you can't have that little extra on it. Schaefer gets a piece. It's one and two. Change up fastball, change up. Verlander ahead in the count, one ball, two strikes. Guy threw just 118 minor league innings. Called up late one year, struggled, frankly. Had a tough time and a couple of starts for the Tigers, but then came back the next year and won 17 games. One and two to Jordan Schaefer. Ninety five but nowhere close to a strike.
When he won the Cy Young Award in 2011 and the American League MVP, he was 24 and 5 with the Tigers in 34 starts and earned an average of 2.4. Pitched to 251 innings. Fought off by Schaefer. Verlander now with 35 pitches. Time now to tweet a photo using hashtag North Fan Photo. For a chance to have it shown in an upcoming game broadcast brought to you by AT&T. Schaefer battling Verlander. The Twins have tied it up here in the second, threatening to get more done. High fastball got him. Each team with three hits in the second inning, each team with a run as we go to the third. Link, your link to what's next. By Northland Ford. Visit NorthlandFord.com and your local Northland Ford dealers today. And by Grand Casino. The best stories start here. Tied at one, going to the third inning. Each pitcher gave up three hits, left a couple of runners on. Trevor May hasn't walked anybody. He has fallen behind. But you look up at the board, 35 pitches, 21 strikes. And he'll face Kinsler, Hunter, and Cabrera in the Tiger third. Yeah, so far, so good for Trevor May. I think, you know, 10 pitches in the first inning, 25 in the second. Now the top of the lineup will be facing May for the second time. Twins wrap up this homestand tomorrow and off day Monday. Then they open up a series in Kansas City. And it'll be on Fox Sports 1 coverage beginning at 6.30 Tuesday night. Streaming live on Fox Sports Go. Our last trip to Kansas City. Kinsler to fly ball to left his first time up. Yeah, he jumped on that first fastball. Just got underneath it to hit the fly ball out. Kansas City and Texas are underway. One apiece top of the third inning. There's strike one. Another one hit to left center, deeper. Schaefer has it measured. One down. And May will take all of those he can get. And, uh, even though they've thumped the Tigers pretty soundly here in the first two games, they have not gotten effective nor deep starting pitching. Today, Johan Pino struggled to get through five, and he got the win. Here's Hunter. Breaking ball lifted foul. 
Corey, 11 seasons with the Twins, five seasons with the Angels, now in his second season with the Tigers. On the ground and past Escobar in the center field. Fourth single for the Tigers. Okay, even at 39 years old, Torrey Hunter still with that quick bat. Taking that pitch right up the middle. Omar Vizquel whispering something to Torrey Hunter, the first base coach. Here's Cabrera. Cabrera with a ground ball to Plouffe, his first time up. One for most of this run of success that the Tigers have had, it's been Verlander in the pitching department and Cabrera in the hitting department. And both players have had off years by the very high standards that they've set for themselves. Cabrera in the power department, just 17 home runs. Yeah, that right ankle right now has been bothering him, and that's, you know, for a right handed hitter, that's kind of your drive foot. So the power numbers down, but the average still up. Hitting at 309. There was some talk in Detroit that similar to the Twins' move of Mauer to first base, that when Cabrera went back to first, the power numbers would uh, even go up because of the less demanding defensive position. Close pitch taken for ball two. Yeah, but if you have a little nagging injury, oh, know, I know. Cabrera's not going to be out of a ball game. I think he's missed one game this year. You know, he tries to play through it, any type of injury. Two and one. Over the last 10 seasons, he's missed only 47 games. So he is out there day in and day out. And again, that right ankle is your kind of your. Foundation of hitting for power, I would think. At least that's what hitters have told yeah, you. You yeah. didn't find that yeah. to be your personal. Why did they effect? always lean back <laughs> on that right ankle? Foul. Left the pitch up. Cabrera barely made contact. Mentioned his uh, years with the Angels. He, he was frustrated the team didn't get into the playoffs most of his tenure with the Angels. Here. Two and two. One, one line, one line line, the club ultra. To left, Schaefer with the catch. It's nice to have a left fielder out there that can cover some ground. Schaefer's been busy. He's caught some fairly well hit balls and turned them into three outs. Yeah, that ball stayed up a little bit. Cabrera put a good swing on it. But the speed of Schaefer able to get over there. They're playing Cabrera about even up, and Schaefer has to hustle over to his right and get that ball. So a nice running catch. Victor Martinez hit a sharp ground ball single up the middle and scored in the second inning. Paying attention to little things too. There are big issues with May and his inability to throw strikes in his first three appearances. But well, Torrey, I, not the uh, base stealer he once right. was. But, but we've got all these base runners that May has allowed. Nobody's even tried to steal. So the little things like paying attention to runners and uh, holding them and trying to control whatever running game the other team might have. There's a strike on the outside corner. Yeah, one thing he has done a good job of is when he does come set. He doesn't just go home. He'll kind of change his how long he holds that ball before he does deliver toward home plate. One strike to Martinez. Swing 
miss. The Tigers were in St. Petersburg to tell the story about Martinez and how incredibly focused he is in his at bats. And he hit a grand slam against the Rays, and he said he didn't realize it was a grand slam till he got to home plate and saw three teammates waiting for him. He was so locked in on the at bat, at least he said he was oblivious to the fact that the bases were loaded. Two strikes. Slow. Might have been a changeup, and it's taken uh, one and two. Well, Martinez in his fourth season with the Tigers, he missed all of 2012 season. Torn ACL where he had two surgeries. Goes on his left knee. Hope foul. May hasn't shown the ability to strike out hitters. It would seem unlikely he would strike out Martinez, who's among the toughest in the league to strike out. When you look at May's minor league numbers, they have our strikeout numbers. 772 innings in the minor leagues, 897 strikeouts. Well, here so far, 11 and two thirds innings and only four strikeouts. Right. One and two. Torrey with four stolen bases in seven attempts. One hundred ninety three career stolen bases for Torrey. One and two for the Tiger first baseman. Two and two. Now this will be pitch number 50 for me trying to get the final out here in the third inning. Deep drive to right, but it will be foul. Whatever that was, Martinez was <laughs> Martinez was waiting for it. Well, it looked like a fastball in, and Martinez opened up and hit that ball foul a long way. Two of 24 home runs that leads the Tigers, and very quick inside, as you can see. Well, uh, body, body Spanish by <laughs> Arcia. <laughs> 15 of the 24 home runs hit as a left handed hitter for Martinez. Another 2 2. Breaking ball served to left. And Hunter's going to try for third. Here's Schaefer's throw. Got him. It might be challenged from up here. It looked like Torrey got in under the tag. But he thought he caught Schaefer napping. Yeah, Torrey is not leaving the bag. Schaefer made a good throw, a quick tag by Trevor Pluth. I think he got in. Yep. So this inning will continue most uh, certainly. Unless he came off the bag. Now that's something to watch too. He got to the bag and then his toe came off as the tag was applied. Or was it? He kind of slid that toe right on the corner of the bag all the way from one side to the other. See if the foot stays in contact with the base. Right now he's out. <laughs> I don't think the one foot was off the bag and Bluff. Right. If he kept, kept the tag on him. Right. So the initial safe call was correct, but then it looked like Hunter might have slid past the bag.
Tom Hallion, the, the crew chief. And Hunter thought he saw Schaefer play it a little tentatively, and then Schaefer came up with a strong throw, and we'll see what the verdict is here. Brad Osmus, Gene Lamont. Gene Lamont, the bench coach for Brad Osmus. Been around the game a long time. Here's with Jim uh, Lefevre. I mean, uh, Jim Leland for a long time. Mm -hmm. Headsets are coming off. And they're calling him safe. And Martinez battling May got a breaking ball and he just served it into left field and you can see Schaefer did feel it a little tentatively and that's what for Hunt Torrey Hunter when he rounded second base he decided you know what I think I can run on him and it was a good throw by by Schaefer but a little bit of hesitation allowed Torrey a couple extra steps the throw had been a little bit lower mm -hmm. might have been the difference at any rate, the inning continues. Fifth Tiger single. Here's J.D. Martinez, who singled his first time up against Trevor May. Blocked nicely by Suzuki. As a player, I mean, a pitcher especially, you know, you think, hey, great throw. I'm out of the inning. You start halfway back to the dugout, and all of a sudden, uh oh, here comes the review. You have to go back and regroup again. Another one in the dirt. Again, blocked by Suzuki. May again was moving along, sailing along just fine against the Royals, but then his trouble began with two outs. Here, a two out single by Victor Martinez. And a ticklish pitch here to J.D. Martinez. Base hit to left. And the two out troubles for May continue. And the Tigers get a two to one lead. Well, second time in second two at bats against Martinez, he fell behind. J.D. Martinez got a base hit on a 3 1 pitch. Here, a 2 0 -oh pitch. And then he's able to hit sharply through the infield. Torrey Hunter scoring. And Martinez picking up his 57th RBI. Third hit of the inning. Extra base that Hunter took on the Victor Martinez single led to a run. And on Nick Castellanos. Fouled away, one strike. Stianos lined out to Schaefer his first time up. And another foul with a 92 mile per hour fastball. May ahead of Castellanos 0 and 2. Stay away from innings like this. Only 10 pitches used in that first inning, 25 in the second, and so far 27, excuse me, 22 used here in the third inning by May. And a breaking ball gets another strike out. Tigers got three singles on a run in the second, and three singles and another run in the third.
nothing lead top of the second inning. Brian Holiday with an RBI single, but the Twins came right back and tied it. For an RBI single by Kurt Suzuki. But the Tigers take a two to one lead. J.D. Martinez driving in Torrey Hunter for a two to one lead. One of the things the Twins used to do to kind of get under Verlander's skin was bunt on him. And they had the perfect guy to do it, Carlos Gomez. He would bunt on anybody at any time in any situation. But we'll see whether Santana might consider that here, leading off the third inning, and Castellanos in on the edge of the grass. One and foul, one strike. Well, with Victor Martinez playing it deep first, just as where Santana would probably be better suited to take the ball with him if he can, to hit it towards second base, Kinsler. Because of the third baseman in on the grass. Santana punches one to left center. He's got a base hit. Yeah, why punt where you can do that? And Santana with a big turn. And he nearly tried to take advantage of Davis as Hunter did on Schaefer. It's a leadoff single. Tell you what, the more and more we see Danny Santana, he's just a good hitter. I mean, not a bad pitch right here, but boy, he just utilizes. Look at that. Just kind of dropping a barrel of bat, hitting it softly in the left field. Ryan Dozier fouled out to Victor Martinez. Twins with four quick hits against Verlander. Strike one. Twins tonight are four for nine against Justin Verlander. Hitting 410 in this series coming into the game. And he gets back. And nine stolen bases against Verlander in 13 attempts. He's had 12 double plays turned behind him. Santana with 12 stolen bases in 15 attempts. Take a low one and one. Twins are now 29 and 35 at home. 29 and 35 on the road. Two and one. 34 games left counting tonight. And it's not a magic number or anything, but if the Twins can simply play 500 baseball from here on out, that gets them to 75 wins. Two and one to Dozier. Had some success against Verlander. Three hits, 12 at bats, a couple of walks. Trying to get a board here to set up the middle of the lineup. It's happened quite often in this series so far. Three and two. Now Santana, Paul Molitor looking over at Scotty Alger, the third base coach. Seeing if Santana will take off here. I say he's going. There he goes. And it's ball four. So Dozier takes a walk. Santana advances first and second. Nobody out for Joe Mauer. Second walk for Verlander. See what the Twins have done in August. It started by bludgeoning the White Sox pitching staff in Chicago. The bludgeoning's a pretty accurate word for what's happened in this series. Well, you like to see the home runs right there. Of course, the uh, 20 runs uh, last night, the 12, we'll get that run per game up, but the home runs. 
Very nice. We'll see what Mauer can get done here. Some speed on the bases. First and second, nobody out. Getting the 25 home runs in just 21 games. Swing and a miss. Joe swung and missed twice in his first inning strikeout. He's had the most experience and the most success against Verlander. 23 for 63 with three home runs. Two strikes. Dozier at first. Santana now begins his lead off of second. Oh and two. Verlander against Mauer. Base hit center field. Santana will score. Dozier to third. Mauer to second with a double. And the Twins very quickly have tied it up for the second time against Justin Verlander. On an 0-2 pitch, it looked like he came back with a changeup, and Mauer went down to hit it sharply in the right center. And then alertly scampered to second base. See the changeup right there. Jones just dropping a barrel of that. Driving in a run is 39th of the year as Santana scores. And Dozier scampering to third, but more impressively, Maurer galloping to second. Yeah, good hustle double right there by Maurer. Now this Vargas. He's 22nd of the year. Vargas punched a single to left in his first ever at bat against Verlander. Strike at the knees. Vargas hitting as a right handed batter this afternoon had three productive plate appearances to the opposite field. And an opposite field single as a lefty in his first at bat tonight. One and one. Quick look at our carsoup.com trivia question who holds the Twins rookie record for RBI in a season. Vargas has no chance of doing that. One and one. And now one and two. The Twins have had some rookies of the year. First was Tony Oliva. He might be the answer. Twins haven't seen a rookie produce runs like this since oh April of this year. And Chris Colabello mm -hmm. was the right. co-American League Player of the Month. Now Colabello technically was not a rookie. He had enough at bats last year, but starting the year with the big league club for the first time, and they drove in 27 runs in a month. I got to throw a name out there, Marty for Goldbach. Now. Rookie of the year for the Twins. One and two, Verlander to Vargas. Struck him out. One down, and that'll bring up Arcia. Well, a big strikeout for Verlander. He went to the curveball, and Vargas swung through it. Strikeout number three in the ballgame for Verlander. Arcia aligned into a double play his first time up against Verlander. Need to get something in the outfield here to get Dozier in from third. Big strikeout of Vargas only if Arcia doesn't have a productive at bat here. Got a pitch to hit and fouled at one strike. That change up right there. Looked like he was waiting for it.
One strike. Nice block by Holiday, one and one. Verlander working out of the windup here with one out. Good speed and Dozier at third, so he'll get that little extra lead in case of a ball is hit somewhere in the infield. He might be able to score. Middle infielders playing back. In tight two and one. And now Verlander's pitch count running up to 54. Only one out here in the third. Get up there again and Arcia. Swung through it two and two. Good fastball, good location right there. Just above the swing of Arcia. Two and two. I'm going to guess he's going to try it again. Got him. And he did. Went up a little bit higher. Two down. What well, Tom Bernanski was working on. You see the hands drop right there, so it's hard for Arcia to catch back up with that fastball, especially if it's got a little giddy up at about 93, 94. Bloof drove a double to right center field. And his first at bat. Twins need a pick me up here. They've had uh, some uh, inexperienced hitters. Exposed by Verlander for a couple of strikeouts. Well, Trevor uh, Trevor Plouffe swung at the first pitch is a fastball. That fastball up. One and oh. A high foul fly. One and one. Loose double, just his fifth hit in 29 at bats against Verlander. Inning started with a Santana single, Dozier walk, Mauer double to tie the game at two. Verlander trying to buckle down and keep this a 2 2 game. And the Twins take a two run lead. Oh, he left the ball up. Luke able to get the barrel of the bat out and line it into that left field quarter. Dozier and Maurer score. I like a little spinner right there, but it spun right into that barrel of the bat of Blue. Now with 65 runs batted in, and the Twins hit their 11th double in this series. Suzuki tied the game at one with a single, a two out single in the second. And it was Suzuki's two run single that beat Verlander in Detroit back in May. Twins won a two to one ball game, and Suzuki got the big two run single to get it done. Strike one. Good time to pick up his first hit of the series after, as Bert mentioned before, the 0 for 6 last night. Hi, one and one. You know, I look at Verlander coming in 10 wins, 11 losses, 159 innings pitched, and 171 hits coming into the ball game. And that's not Verlander. You know, you talked about, yeah, the walks are okay. He'll average about three walks per nine. 
but over his career he has given up every season less hits to innings pitched. Outside two and one. I know myself as a pitcher if I pitch 200 innings I want to give up 200 or less hits. It's one thing I always tried to look at was innings pitch and then hits. Last year 118 innings pitched for Verlander 212 hits allowed. Two and one to Suzuki. On strike two years ago Verlander. Went 17 and 8 and an ERA of 2.64. He enters this game tonight with a season ERA of more than two runs better than that of two years ago. And the ERA hasn't gone down tonight. Runs with four earned runs already. But what I'm saying, that even that year, 239 innings, 192 hits allowed. And Suzuki strikes out. But the Twins get a big two out double from Trevor Bluth and score three in the third. They took the second lead, but the Twins took the third lead. It's a two run lead for the uh, Twins as we head to the fourth inning. No matter the occasion, Target Field is the Twins territory headquarters to entertain groups of 25 or more. It might be a family celebration, a church outing, or an event to raise funds for your organization. Simply reserve your best guest number of seats. Pay only for those you need when the time comes. Find out more. Go to twinsbaseball.com or call 1 800. 33 twins. Let's see if Trevor May can have a clean fourth like he did in the first inning. 10 pitches in the first, 25 in the second, 23 in the third. Total of 58 right now for Trevor May. Twins just gave him a two run lead. And he will face Brian Holiday, Eugenio Suarez, and Rajay Davis, bottom third of the Tiger lineup. Yeah, Holiday knocked in the first run for the Tigers in the second inning with an RBI single. Down and away, ball one. Hasn't been clean for May. Three singles and a run allowed in the second, three singles and a run allowed in the third. One and oh. And a strike. Popped up. Mauer. Across the line now with the catch one down. And it'll bring up Suarez. Suarez.
has struck out against Trevor May. One of two strikeouts that May has had so far. No walks for May. Check swing and a foul. Kansas City leading Texas 2 1 in the fifth. The breaking ball misses inside 1 and 1. Side corner, two and two. Yes, war started at Triple A Toledo for the Detroit Tigers, called up on June 4th. Now up high, three and two. May has gotten ten outs. He has not walked the batter. He has given up the six singles. He throws a strike and gets a foul ball. A call third strike. Two down. Looked like a two seamer that just ran down and in. And Suzuki, who was sitting outside, able to hold it. It's a fastball for strike three. So two. third strikeout for May. Two down and on a Rajay Davis. He had a one, two, three first inning. And at a lead, he'd love to have a one, two, three, four, then there's strike one. Strike two. And a foul ball. I like to see what he's doing right now. Just go ahead and let it fly. And I think Suzuki feels it too. Breaking ball popped up to short right. Dozier out. And a one, two, three, fourth for Trevor May. Stay tuned for this important message from Mesh Betcher and Spence. Feed my starving children and pack meals at the Coon Rapids and Egan locations between now and August 31st, or the Chanhassen location between now and September 12th. 
And while you're there, register for a chance to win admission for two to a Twins game and right in style on the Fox Sports North Fan Express. Twins in front, trying to make it four in a row, four wins in a row after beating the Indians in the final game of the series. Now Verlander, who missed his last start because of a little bit of inflamed right shoulder, already a lot of pitches, 64 pitches in three innings. Down and in to Escobar drew a walk his first time up. Escobar, Schaefer, and Santana. Foul into the seats. Doesn't make any difference how good a team is, or for that matter, how good a pitcher is. It seems like there's one guy on every team that's just a pain in the neck. And Escobar is that guy for the Tigers at least this year, hitting 500 against them. Fly ball to center. This should be an out. Davis with the catch one away. And that'll bring up Jordan Schaefer. Tim Laudner was telling the story about Twins days in the early 80s when one of the nastiest pitchers in the American League was Dave Steed of the Toronto Blue Jays. He had just a lights out slider. Yes, he, he could did. not get Houston Jimenez out. Now Jimenez hit about what 215 for the Twins when he was with them as their uh, diminutive shortstop. And he would rake against Dave Steed. Schaefer bumps it foul. You know what happens sometimes against hitters like that and I had guys same thing that you just don't feel comfortable with you try to make that perfect pitch and all of a sudden you find yourself 2 1 3 1. OK well he's hitting low in the lineup you have to make him swing the bat and sure he did. Strike to Schaefer. Allison third in on the grass. That last bunt was directed toward the first base. And a little number. Verlander fields his position well and fires to first. Two down. Cleveland had a little second baseman, Jack Brohan, that I just, for some reason, had trouble with. And he always hit, you know, seven, eight, nine in the lineup. Danny Santana started the three run third with a single to left center. Starters kind of following each other. May had a one, two, three inning in the first, then a one, two, three in the fourth. Verlander a one, two, three in the first. Struggle in the second and the third, and looking for a one, two, three inning here in the fourth. Since I brought it up, I had to look it up. Menez hit 174 in 1983 and 201 in 1984. He got 60 hits. Seemed like half of more against one of the best pitchers in the game. Drill to center. This could be interesting. All the way to the wall. Santana tripled this afternoon. He's got another one here tonight. A two out triple, the fourth triple for the Twins in this series. And triple number six on the year for Santana. Fastball right there. Santana giving it a ride. Davis shading him a little bit to left center. And it got past the speedy Davis in center field. So it's a two out triple for Santana. And a second hit. The 20th extra base hit for the Twins in this series. And now Dozier. Walked and scored his last time up, squaring the bunt with Castellanos playing two thirds of the way back on the skin of the infield at third base. One strike. Seven hits for the Twins already against Verlander.
popped up down the right field line. Long run for Kinsler. And in foul ground, he makes the grab and Santana left the third base. Start fans of the game hoping the Twins can continue to mash as they have against this Tiger pitching staff, beating Justin Verlander tonight four to two, out hitting the Tigers seven to six. Young ladies enjoying the ball game. Trevor May starting his fifth inning, 72 pitches, 47 for strikes. And it rolling this far against the Kansas City Royals, and then it all kind of fell apart. After two were out, three walks, three hits, and he was knocked out of the game. See how he fares here. He had a one, two, three, fourth, but that was against the bottom three hitters in the Tiger lineup. Here in the fifth, he'll face Kinsler, Hunter, and Cabrera. Pitch tracks presented by Dodge. Well, he had a one, two, three inning against the top three in the first inning. Let's do it again. Breaking ball over, strike one. Johan Pino this afternoon fared okay through the first two trips through the batting order, but it was the third time that really gave him fits. The base hit for Kinsler. Another single for the Tigers. That'll bring up Hunter with a man aboard. Yeah, he left a pitch right in that hit zone right there, and Kinsler taking it right back up the middle. Seventh hit for the Tigers, so hits are even at seven apiece. Hunter singled and scored. Scampered from first to third on a single to left, which was a very alert base running play. And again, made conscious of the speed at first. All the base runners that he's dealt with, and still just the one ground ball double play. I think what we've seen, Trevor May is more of a fly ball pitcher right. than a ground ball pitcher. Yeah, seven fly ball outs so far, only two ground ball outs, and both of them coming in the first inning. High ball one. He really got underneath that fastball, and as you start to get higher in the pitch count, which is 75 right now, you have to really concentrate on it. Working out front and keeping that ball down in the zone. Lead with your fingers over the ball, not underneath it. Step off.
pitchers always talk about that downward plane. That's what you want to create that angle toward the catcher's glove. And May at six foot five can create that just like Kyle Gibson tomorrow starter when he can throw that good sinker down. Breaking ball hits the corner. Watch out front. You see the arm coming through on the breaking ball. But then even in slow motion, you could tell how quick he is to home plate. That's why no one's trying to steal against him. Fly ball down the left field line, chased by Schaefer. And into the seats. And then back out. One and two. Hits are even at seven apiece. Twins have mixed in a few extra base hits. Three doubles and a triple. All the Detroit hits have been singles. Been Detroit's inning. They've uh, done quite well in the fifth in the first two games of this series. Keeping an eye on Kinsler, 13 stolen bases on the year. One and two to Hunter. To right center field. RC will try to take it down. He cuts it off in the gap. Here's his throw to second base, and he's held Hunter to a single. Good play by RC in right center field, going into a slide to keep the tying run at first rather than second. And it would have put Torrey Hunter at second base for sure. RC is sliding, making a nice play. Torrey taking that pitch the other way, his second hit of the ball game. Suzuki again wanting that ball away and that ball came over the plate. And Arcea sliding, getting it, knocking it down, and getting it back in quickly. And Torrey thought about it and then put on the brakes and got back to first. The fifth inning starts with a pair of singles. Here's Cabrera. Double play grounder. Six, four. Mauer with the dig. No run batted in for Cabrera. A run scores. It's four to three. That's a big double play right there. The first turned. Excuse me. The second turn behind May. It's all set up by Arcia. If he doesn't make that sliding play in the gap, the double play is not in order. Escobar to Dozier, and then Mauer. Getting the one hop to complete the double play. Torrey going in hard. An off balance throw by Dozier. Bases empty, two down, and here's Victor Martinez, a pair of singles against May already. Off speed pitch over for a called strike. He took something off the curveball right there. The city leading Texas 4 1 in the sixth. Fouled away two strikes. Martinez was in this count in his third inning at bat, and then there was a foul ball and a couple of pitches out of the strike zone, and another foul ball or two, and then may try to throw him a curve. And Martinez just softly planted it in left field for his second base hit. Away. The 
Good strike to ball ratio 55 strikes 27 balls thrown popped up center field Santana coming in one run for the Tigers no more because Oswaldo Arcia made a fine play in the outfield that directly led to a double play. circle with Jessica and Taylor, a couple of young lovebirds who had their very first date here at Target Field and it worked, right? So you came back. Yes, it did. <laughs> what makes Target Field such a great first date spot, Taylor? Uh, just coming out and seeing the twins and just having fun in the sun, pretty much. And it was your idea because you're a twins fan, right? Definitely. Big twins fan. Awesome. Well, we're going to make this date even a little better, hopefully, than your first one by giving you $100 worth of scratch-offs to the Minnesota Lottery. How about that? Awesome. Thank you so much. Enjoy the game, guys. Thank you. Thank you, Jamie. You were both here by circle. Mauer, Vargas, and Arcia facing Verlander here in the fifth. Strike one to Mauer. Thank you for being twin fans. Popped up. Short left. Retreating to Suarez. And Mauer's retired. One away. We'll bring up Kenny Vargas. Vargas singled to left in the second, and then with two men in scoring position and nobody out, Verlander struck out not only Vargas but Arcia, and then Ploof came through with a two-run double to give the Twins a 4-2 lead. Yeah, Verlander threw him a pretty good curveball ahead in the count in his last plate appearance, that being in the third inning when he struck him out. Popped up right side. Good change up there. And Kinsler with the catch two away. Arceus had a very productive homestand, a rather destructive homestand in relation to the foul poles here. He's hit two of them. Or uh, flag poles, I should say. Hit the old Met Stadium flag pole. And then he took aim at the state of Minnesota flag pole. One more and he gets the hat trick. <laughs> Outside ball one. Marcia lined into a double play in the second and then struck out in the third. Taking ball two. And Arcia, who's had a quiet day at the plate, kept the twins. In front with a fine defensive play in the top of this inning. Marcia last year, 14 home runs in 97 games, and he has 14 home runs so far this year in now 74 games. 3 0, Blue Fondak. 
And that's what you want to see improvement. Green lighted on three and zero. Oh. Three and one. Verlander making his 26 start. He's given up 16 home runs. Foul back three and two. I don't know what that pitch is, but it's only registering in the upper 80s. Mm -hmm. It's taken a little off the fastball. Sky a mile in the air. Martinez waits and waits and waits, makes the catch. Three pop ups for three outs in the bottom of the fifth. As we go to the sixth inning now on FoxSportsNorth.com, check out the latest top tweets from Minnesota area athletes, including Twins first round draft pick Nick Gordon, Dick Raymer, Burt Blylevin, and Jamie Hirsch, bringing you the nightcap of a split doubleheader. Twins won 20 to 6 last night, scored another 12 runs and a win today. This figured to be a much more pitching oriented game. And yet the Twins have four early runs against Justin Verlander in a lead. Yeah, Trevor May with a 4-3 lead starting his sixth inning. Third major league start for Trevor Lee. Or May, excuse me. Encouragingly, eight hits but no walks. No, the no walks part is the encouraging thing. The eight hits, of course, a few too many. But he'll face J.D. Martinez, who's singled twice against him. Nick Castellanos and Brian Holiday here in the sixth. He's fallen behind on Martinez both at bats. There's strike one. No activity in the Twins bullpen with May just delivering his 84th pitch. And a breaking ball missing the inside corner. Martinez single in the second, drove in a run with a single in the third. Yeah, Ryan Presley struck out Martinez on a good curveball in game one. It was a fastball away. That he did not have a very good swing at. He almost had the same swing that he had on the first breaking ball that was down and away. See if Suzuki wants that breaking ball again. Now down and away. We've seen many of his changeups, have we? Me? Over 
breaking ball and a check swing foul. Yeah, that more of the slider. A couple of times I've watched Martinez not have a good swing at that curveball that starts about oh down the middle of the plate and then breaks down and away. And he missed inside. And again, Suzuki sitting inside. That was the change up there. Yep. Two and two. Breaking ball, but he hung it. Martinez got a piece of it. A bit of a hanger there. High heat struck him out. One down. And strikeout number four for Trevor May. Well, one thing we have seen that's improvement. Oakland only a couple innings. You can see the pitches per inning, Houston, and so far in Kansas City. Doing a better job here tonight. 90 pitches thrown, 68% of them strikes, so he's not too far off from uh, Tony LaRusse's uh, stated goal of having a pitcher throw 70%. Castellanos, half swing, strike one. Twins had Eric Fryer catch this afternoon because they wanted Suzuki, the veteran catcher, to try to help nurse May through whatever rough spots there might be tonight, up and in. And if you uh, have been impressed with May's improvement here tonight, Suzuki's had a lot to do with that in terms of the pitch selection, calming May down at times. But there have not been a whole lot of trips to the mound by the catcher. No. To right field into the corner. And Garcia didn't really run after it. I don't know if he thought that ball was going to carry farther. It's a foul ball. Yeah, it kind of looked like he was playing, going to be ready for the little carry him off the wall. Yeah, he yeah, hit the padding in foul territory. And he probably wouldn't have been able to make the catch, so he played it right. smartly. One and two to Castellanos. Breaking ball in the dirt. Six of the eight hits against May have come from three batters. We each have two hits. Just off the outside corner. At 92. Very early in the game we saw May clocked at 94. A good arm extension there just missed low. Full count no walk so far for Trevor May. Little breaking ball, and it's another single. And that'll bring up Holiday. Nine hits, all singles off of Trevor May. Holiday has one of the singles, driving in the first Tiger run in the second. Jared Burton starting to get up in the bullpen. To right center field. Arcia can't make the play. It'll go to the wall. Castellanos to second. On his way to third. They're going to hold him there. It's the first extra base hit for the Tigers. But now second and third with only one out. And Eugenio Suarez, the next batter. Yeah, Holiday got that fastball away and hit it sharply. Arcee, a good effort right there. Good hustle by Santana having to back it up. 
Yeah, fastball right there. Holiday taking it the other way. About a glove short of making an outstanding catch. Then Santana hustling on the play to get it back in. Tying run at third, one away. Suarez has struck out twice against May, once swinging, once looking. Ten hits for the Tigers. Breaking ball, a foul to the screen. Jared Burton will be the first man out of the pen. The Twins hope that May can fight his way through this sixth inning mess. One strike to Suarez. Base hit center field. It'll score one. Castellanos being waved around. Santana's throw hits the mound. And May picks up the carom near the net. So three straight hits, and the Tigers have the lead here in the sixth. Nash Suarez fought off a pitch after striking out in his first two at bats and hit it softly into center field. In that ball about thigh high. And Holiday at second base got a good jump. Dave Clark, the third base of coach, sending him. The ball hitting the back of the mound and then flipping all the way back to the backstop. It'll be an air charge to Santana, tough air. It'll be the end of the night for Trevor May. Third trip. Through the batting order, not a pleasant one with the Tigers amassing five hits in the eight at bats. And Trevor May entered the inning with a chance to perhaps pick up his first major league win, but that won't happen tonight. And May gave up a bunch of hits, didn't walk anybody, and comes out with one out in the sixth. Appreciation weekend at Target Field, the 19th through the 21st during the games against the Indians. Fans in attendance can win all kinds of great prizes and gifts on Friday and Saturday. Then on the 21st, the first 10,000 kids, 14 and under, get a Joe Mauer growth chart. Twinsbaseball.com or 1 800 33 Twins, the number to call for more info. Yeah, Jared Burton coming out of the bullpen, first one out of the bullpen for the Twins. He worked in last night's ball game, one shot out inning in the 20 to 6 went over the Tigers. Through 20 pitches, 14 for strikes. Trying to keep this a one run game. Suarez went to second on the throw. The error charged to Santana. Yeah, even though Trevor May did not walk anybody, he had four strikeouts. He did give up 11 hits in five and a third innings and a lot of pitches. You can see 
not much movement pretty uh, pretty much right there so Trevor May uh, hopefully we'll get another start and get another shot at it Davis is 0 for 2 tonight a fly to right and a pop up to second and the Tigers roll the lineup over again with Kinsler Royals leading the Rangers 6 1 in the seventh. Tapper to third. Plouffe bare hands fires. Good play by Trevor Plouffe. That is an outstanding play by Plouffe because Davis gets down that line very quickly. Had only one chance, and that's the bare handed exactly what he does on the run. You see the paws open up, get the grip on that baseball, and flip it over to Maurer. See the open hand? You don't have time to really try to use the seams or anything. You might when you have a little extra time, but not right there. Just let it fly, and it's a nice defensive play. Burton gets the second out of the inning on his first pitch, and now Kinsler singled and scored his last time up. Bounce foul with Kinsler jumping on the first pitch. Or trying to. Burton in his third season with the Twins, eighth overall with the Reds. Check swing one on one for five years. Front. Good change up there. One and two. Three relievers used in game one. Ryan Presley, two shutout innings, and Anthony Swarzak and Caleb Theobar, each one shutout inning. Good job by the bullpen in game one. And Suzuki with a nice job catching strike three. The Tigers. Take a lead in the sixth. Trevor Bloop with a fine play to keep it a one run game. event is going on now. Toyota, let's go places. By Sanford Orthopedics and Sports Medicine for the everyday competitor in all of us. And by McDonald's where a French vanilla McCafe iced coffee is just $1.59 all summer long. Justin Verlander handed his third one run lead each time so far tonight. The Twins have come back. Ploof 
With a big rip and a miss. One strike, he's got a pair of doubles against Verlander tonight. Yeah, kind of a teeter totter type game. Tigers took the lead, Twins tied it. Tigers went ahead again, Twins took the lead. Now it's the Tigers with a one run lead. And a called second strike. It'll be Plouffe, Suzuki, and Escobar in the sixth. Did you ever go on the teeter totter when you were a young kid? Yeah. Unpleasant experience, to be honest with you. Yeah. Up the middle, three hits tonight for Trevor Ploof, and two of them on 0 2 pitches. Yeah, Verlander making a mistake right there, leaving a pitch up. You know, he gave him Joe Maurer that RBI double on an 0 2 pitch. Well, Verlander ahead, but the breaking ball just kind of spun right there. And Ploof taking advantage of that high pitch. And Hitting it sharply up the middle. I was interested looking at Holiday's reaction. He just kind of put his mitt down in the dirt like that was nowhere close to where I set up the target. Here's Suzuki, an RBI single in the second, and a strikeout in the third. Strike on the outside corner. Now let's watch the fastball. The velocity readings this inning and what might be Verlander's last. That was at 90. Now his last start coming on August 11th against the Pirates in Pittsburgh. He only went one inning. And that's when that shoulder issue came up. Said it had been bothering him for some time, and when asked for specifics, Verlander didn't offer any. Two strikes. He had a shoulder injury in his first professional season to put him on the disabled list, but never on the DL, as you said, as a big leaguer. He's been a workhorse. Two strikes to Suzuki. He left another very hittable pitch up there on 0-2. I don't recall Verlander leaving as many hittable pitches. Again, more hits than innings pitch coming into this game. He's given up eight hits in five plus innings. Jeff Jones, the pitching coach, keeping an eye and pitch count on Verlander. Fastball up and away at 92. Now if that's what's left, 92, that's a far cry from 97. That's why I said you have to start hitting your spots. He's getting to that point of really wanting to be a pitcher, and you have to keep that ball down. Twins are doing to Verlander tonight. Other teams have done. There's a reason he uh, came into this game with an ERA closer to five than four. Two and two to Suzuki. High and deep to left center. Davis ranges over to the gap to make the catch. Booth bluffs the tag. One down. Bring up Escobar. Sanford Health injury report. Indians picked up Chris Jimenez today because Gomes is on the concussion list. He hit, uh, was hit by a deflected pitch that hit Kurt Suzuki here the other day and uh, had to be taken out of the game. And hasn't returned, and so the Indians today picked up Chris Jimenez, his second stint with Cleveland. Mm -hmm. Here is Escobar. 0 for 1 with a walk in tonight's game. Well, some action in the Tigers' bullpen. Righty and a lefty. 
Albuquerque and Hardy. Hardy being the lefty. Belt high strike to Escobar. That's thrown away. And Plouffe will advance. Verlander threw it across the runner, and Martinez couldn't catch it, so the tying runs in scoring position with one out. A little surprise that Verlander threw over there. Trevor Plouffe, not really a beast base stealing threat, and he didn't have that big a lead. Verlander will be charged with an error on this wild throw that looked like he got a piece of. Trevor Plouffe and deflected away. Martinez got glove on it. Nope. Nope. Right in the buttocks. One strike to Escobar. And now a ball. That'll leave a mark. Escobar with a 1 1 count. Top foul on him, too. Five hits last night, three hits here this afternoon. Looking for his first hit in the nightcap. A good time to get it. Bring Eight. his Detroit batting average back up to 500. Mm -hmm. Eight hits and 12 at bats so far in this series. Would like to take advantage of the air by Verlander. In the dirt, Holiday with a nice pickup. Very nice block there by the catcher. Two and two. Tomorrow the Twins will. Face the 2013 Cy Young Award winner, facing the 2011 Cy Young Award winner tonight. Max Scherzer goes for Detroit. Two and two to the twin shortstop. Check swing, and Holiday didn't catch that. It was pretty close to being a strike, wasn't it? I think there was a cross up. I was going to say, they're talking right there. You know, Verlander winning the Cy Young in 2012. You, met, you mentioned uh, Scherzer in 2013. So they go out and get David Price, and he won the Cy Young in 2012. Yeah, definitely a cross up. Yeah, it's also strike three. Already looking fastball. Verlander dropped the hook on him. Full count to Escobar. The fastball got him. Two down. Strikeout number six for Verlander. Tuesday, MLB returns to Fox Sports One. The Twins go to Kansas City, taking on the Royals. Opening game of a three game series. Coverage beginning at 6 30 on Fox Sports One, streaming live on Fox Sports Go. Certainly looks like the Royals will be in first place when the Twins get to Kansas City for their final trip of the year. Kansas City leading six to one, top of the eighth in Arlington. Twins need a big two out hit. Here from Jordan Schaefer. Schaefer over two. Strike out and a ground ball back to Verlander. Ball one. Three of the four runs for the Twins tonight against Verlander have been delivered with two out hits. Back one on one. Trevor Plouffe, the tying run. Schaefer trying to get him in.
to the foul uh, or foul down the left field line back into the seats one and two. One hundred and two pitches for Verlander. Trying to get out of the sixth inning here. Any further damage. Twins got a leadoff single by Ploof. Verlander committing an error, advancing him to second. One and two to Jordan Schaefer. Look it up high. Two and two. Escobar stayed off of that, or he swung through that high fastball. Schaefer took it. Three and two. Santana on deck. Verlander again coming into this ball game his seventh start at Target Field. He came in 4 and 0 in his first six starts with a 1.86 earned run average. He has not been real sharp here tonight. Full count to Jordan Schaefer. Up high, ball four. Schaefer draws another walk. And Santana, who's blistered two line drive hits against Verlander, won't face him for another time. That'll be the end of the night for Justin Verlander. Third walk of the ball game for Verlander. Five and two thirds innings, eight hits allowed. The runners on the bases are still his responsibility. Glare by Verlander, who I'm sure wanted to at least complete the sixth inning. But Danny Santana will have a chance to. Didn't have his best up, but he does lead leave here with a one run lead. But the two runners on base with two outs are his responsibility. So it'll be Blaine Hardy coming into the ball game. He worked here in last night's ball game, pitched an inning in a third, allowed a couple hits, but no runs. 28 pitches, 17 for strikes. He's done a good job out of that bullpen. Santana takes strike one. Santana's uh, been effective from both sides of the plate. One strike. Nice stop again by Holiday, and it's one and one. Hardy making his 26th relief appearance. 28 hits allowed. Excuse me, 26 hits allowed in 29 and a third innings. 12 walks, one intentional, 25 strikeouts. 
in his rookie season, second stint with the Tigers this year. One and one to Santana. Popped up, got him out in front. Little short fly ball into center. Davis comes in to make the catch. Twins lead two. It's a one run game as we go to the seventh. Up two to one. It was Joe Mauer's RBI double that scored Santana and Brian Dozier. Twins took a lead, a four to two lead after the third inning. But the Tigers came fighting back with a run in the fifth and two in the sixth. Turn of a double play, but that also scored a run. And a couple runs scored in the sixth inning for a 5 4 Tigers lead. Both starters out of the ball game. Verlander talking it over with Jeff Jones, the pitching coach, and Brad Osmus. Torrey Hunter takes a breaking ball in the outside corner, one strike. Yeah, Jared Burton got the final two outs in the sixth inning, reliever, relieving Trevor May out here to start the seventh inning. And a base hit up the middle. Another hit for the Tigers. They came into this game with the highest team batting average in the major leagues, and they keep racking up hits. And Torrey Hunter getting his third hit. They came in hitting 272 as a ball club, and the old man Torrey Hunter continues to hit. Actually, the Rockies have a uh, an asterisk higher team batting average. Here's Cabrera bounced into a double play last time. 0 for 3 tonight. Clubs have run on Jared Burton. Strike one to Cabrera. Said at the start of the game, when both starters are out of the game, the Tigers will be leading by a run and it'll be in the hands of the bullpen. I think most Twins fans would have taken that, right? Mm -hmm. and we'll see how it plays out. One hop to Escobar, and for the second time tonight, Cabrera's wrapped into a double play. 
ball hit sharply, but right at Escobar. Two down. Yeah, second 6 4 3 double play that Cabrera has it hit into. And Dozier did the right thing. He had plenty of time to throw to Maurer because Cabrera, I mean, he smoked his ball, but a one hopper to Escobar. Drew Martinez, two for three. Trash presented by Carrier. Another score that is very relevant for the Tigers and their fortunes. Seattle won again today at Fenway Park, seven to three. And as the start of play today, the Tigers were not in the driver's seat in either their division or the wild card standings. Cap foul. At that win of Seattle, they are now 70 and 58. Tigers coming into play this ball game, 68 and 59. Cleveland beat Houston three to two, and Kansas City comfortably in front of Texas late in Arlington, six to one. Two and one to count to Victor Martinez and a foul. If Kansas City wins, and if the Twins come back and beat the Tigers, the Tigers will be closer. To Cleveland in third place, and they will be to Kansas City in first place. Two and two to Victor Martinez. Burton has faced four men and gotten four outs, but he has given up a base hit. Single, another single for Martinez. Martinez with his third hit of the ball game, as Torrey Hunter has three. May had a one-two-three first and a one-two-three fourth. The uh, Tigers had collected three hits in the second, three hits in the third, two in the fifth, three in the sixth, and now two more here in the seventh. Yeah, thirteen hits, twelve singles. J.D. Martinez has a pair of singles. Ball one. Swing and a miss. Good change up there by Burton. <laughs> Down low, two and one. Down the line and a fair ball. 
How far can Martinez go? That ball took a carom in front of Schaefer, and now Martinez still being held at third. We saw Martinez score from first on a double this afternoon. But even with the ball cutting in front of Schaefer, he was able to get to it to put up the stop sign at third base. That's a tough play for an outfielder because if it doesn't care him, it goes right into the corner and it just hit the corner of the grandstands that come out right there. Schaefer hustling into the corner in case it went there right at the corner, ricocheted back out toward left field, but Schaefer. Got to it quickly. Martinez, of course, not the quickest of foot, is held up at third. So JD Martinez with three hits in a ball. And three more Tiger hits here in the seventh. Anderson has spoken his piece. Castellanos, the batter. Only outs recorded on a very sharp ground ball double play off the bat of Cabrera. Shrug of the shoulders and manager not sure what to do here. You're gonna give Burton one more batter. Yeah, nobody was up in the bullpen now. Somebody throwing. Ball one. He's been really good as of late, but here in the seventh inning. Yeah, Casey Fiend up in the bullpen. Two and zero. Oh. Giving up two runs in his last ten outings, covering eleven innings. Two and zero. Oh. Swing and a miss. Again, oh, nasty change ups by Burrow. Well, that's definitely Burton's best pitch, but he has a fastball and a hard slider. Two and two to Castellanos. Missed low to fill the count. Tried with a fastball. Won't be surprised if he comes back with that change up here on a 3 2 pitch. You don't want to make a mistake. You have first base open. Base hit to right. And it'll score two runs, and the Tigers open up a three run lead, fourth hit of the inning. Against Jared Burton. What an at bat by Castellanos. Castellanos getting a fastball down and just went with it the other way. His second hit driving in two runs now at 54 runs batted in. And it's a seven to four ball game. And here comes Ron Gardenhire to come get Jared Burton who faced seven men. Well, he went down and got that fastball and lined it into right field. Everything here in the seventh inning hit pretty hard against Burton. Disastrous outing. With the Tigers getting a bunch of uh, well three two out hits to score a couple of runs. And it's a three run lead for Detroit with Casey Fiend coming in.
Jared Burton in the seventh. Might be going over that 3 2 pitch. I just thought that, you know, with first base open, Burton's strikeout pitch has been that changeup, but he went with a fastball and credit Castellanos for going down and getting that ball, but you did have first base open. Casey Fein was going to be saved for the eighth inning has to get the final out of the seven. Yeah, Fein making his 60th relief appearance very good numbers on the bullpen combined 2.7 OERA in 53 and a third innings only nine walks 44 strikeouts. Holiday with a couple of productive hits an RBI single in the second double and a run scored in the sixth. It's a foul ball one strike. Been originally signing with the Tigers back in 2006, pitched for him a little bit in 2009 and 10. In his third season with the Twins. Down and away, one and one. Center. And Santana ends the inning. With four hits for the Tigers. A couple of runs. They now lead by three. Better than any form I was eating a break. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Minnesota Twins LLC. I don't think you read that this afternoon. You want to read yes. it twice tonight? Did no, you read I, it? I did. Yes. Yes, I did. Okay. All right. How about you kind of stumbled on it? You want to read it? No? No, well, I'll read it tomorrow. Right, now watch, I'll show you how it's done. Okay. This is how you're supposed to read it. Right. Hey Twins fans, come to the Twins game on Saturday, September 6th. To get your all star game, Glenn Perkins bobblehead presented by Pepsi. The first 10,000 fans at Target Field that night will receive the limited edition bobble. Call 833 Twins or visit twinsbaseball.com. Thank you. Like I haven't read that 50 <laughs> times before. Dozier leading off the seventh, a strike well, now a ball. I've only read the disclaimer. <laughs> That's true. For 19 years. <laughs> Dozier, Maurer, and Vargas. Twins want to answer. A two run top of the seventh inning. That's Wallop to left. Oh. Off the glove of Martinez. And Dozier goes to second with a leadoff double. 
Well, it looked like Blaine Hardy left the change up up, and Dozier got the barrel on the bat out. Almost a great catch by J.D. Martinez. The high pitch hammered in the left field. Martinez gave a chase, and right off the tip of the glove. Hmm. So Dozier gets a double, his 27th of the year. And see if the Twins can come back and tie this ball game or not or even go ahead. 21st extra base hit of the series. And here is Maurer. He has an RBI double and a run score. Down and in ball one. Tiger bullpen has been a minefield this year. One and oh to Maurer. Strike one and one. Well, it's not like the Tigers have not tried to improve their bullpen, too. You know, they added Soria. He's currently on a disabled as Jim Johnson. They're hoping that he would get back to where he was a couple of years or last two years with the Orioles. One and one. Bouncer right side. Dozier will advance. And Kinsler throws to first one down and before Vargas comes to the plate let's check in with Jamie Hirsch thank you Dick and Bert well I talked to Joe Maurer after the first game of this doubleheader because I was curious to get his thoughts on Kenny Vargas he said Kenny's is so eager to learn and it is really nice to see that kind of passion and excitement from a guy just starting out it brings Joe back to his days starting out Joe said that Vargas is always asking questions, and he thought he played a great game at first base today. And he said it's nice to have that option to be able to DH every now and then and know that Vargas is going to be solid out there. And also, of course, Vargas very solid at the plate so far, guys. Yes, he has been. Thank you very much, Jamie. RBI in every game so far, an average of that. You can drive one in here. In fact, the Tigers are conceding it with a three-run lead. They've got the infield. Two of the infielders are playing in the outfield grass. Half swing, but he went. One strike. Soup.com trivia question. The Twins rookie record for RBI. I'm going to go with uh, Rich Rollins. Yeah, me too. <laughs> wow, that's a lot of runs batted in. Dozier will score on a weak ground ball to Kinsler, and it's a two run game. Two down. Saw Rich during the All Star break. The Twins were uh, nice enough to. Invite him to the Twin Cities as a two time All Star. He was here. Had a chance to uh, visit with him briefly. Good man. And very nice man. Very nice man. Var Vargas does pick up the RBI, his 23rd. And now Arcia, 0 for 3. Hit the one ball very hard against Verlander, lining into a double play. Kinsler with a nice catch. Arcia with a big swing and a foul to the screen. Good swing there. Popped up to left. Martinez has an easier play here. Lead off double. The Twins will respond with one run. They trail by two.
seventh inning from Casey Fiend. And that'll uh, bring Samuel Duduno into the game to pitch to the Tigers in the eighth. Yeah, Duduno making his 28th appearance. He did make eight starts earlier this year for the Twins. 86 and two thirds innings, 87 hits allowed, 38 walks. That has been a problem for Duduno. And 68 strikeouts. Vargas hoping for another at bat. The Twins hope to do some scoring against the Tiger bullpen. Suarez, Davis, and Kinsler lined up to face Duduno here in the Detroit eighth inning. With a two run single in the sixth, effectively chasing Trevor May. May took a lead into the sixth inning, struck out the first batter, but then gave up three straight hits. And right now, he's the pitcher of record. Had to do no job right here, put a zero on the board. And a ground ball no single to start. right. Fourth inning where the Tigers have gotten a leadoff base hit. And you can follow every Twins game with MLB.com at bat on your favorite mobile phone or tablet. Get live look ins, instant replay, score stats, audio, free MLB.tv game of the day, and more. Download on the App Store or visit TwinsBaseball.com. 16 hits for the Tigers. A couple of doubles, and the rest have all been singles. Rajay Davis 0 for 3. Runner goes and the pitch grounded to Ploof. Davis retired and on the play Suarez moves to second. Yeah, look a little hit and run put on right there and Davis got jammed a little bit on that breaking ball. Suarez gets into scoring position. Two pitches by Deduno, two completed at bats, a runner at second, one out, and here's Kinsler. Kinsler single and scored in the fifth. And Kinsler, another one that will swing at that first pitch. But not like that. One and oh. Up to right, and Arcia comes in. Going out number two. Right, so my news and notes about baseball: Javier Baez has been striking out an awful lot, but he hit his seventh home run in his 19th major league game as the Orioles took it on the chin. Jordan Zimmerman getting his ninth win. That's enjoying a healthy lead in the East. They had a 10 game winning streak, then they lost, and now they may start another one. They were hoping to make it to the postseason for the second year in a row. Torrey Hunter with one, a two out and a runner at second. Hunter with three straight singles in tonight's game. And that clipped him on the arm. First and second, two down. Yeah, breaking ball for Dadudo. That's his tenth hit batsman of the season. Tory blowing a kiss into the Twins dugout. Cabrera, 0 for 4. Hit into two ground ball double plays. Don't say that too often. And that ball will be. Trickling into center field for another run. And Dozier tried to at least knock it down and he couldn't. The ball bounded by Deduno. And Cabrera drives in a run in the eighth. Six pitches and in into this appearance for Deduno. He's faced five batters. <laughs> so 
the Tigers coming out swinging. Cabrera picks up his first hit, driving in his 89th run of the year, right back up the middle. You're right, Dozier did everything he could to try to knock this ball down. Well, just got underneath it. That allows to run the score, and it's an eight to five lead. Tigers keep adding on here, and they're going to lift Cabrera for a pinch runner. Justin Romine's going to run for the designated hitter. Seventeen hits for the Tigers, and once again a three-run lead. Strike one to Victor Martinez. The right field. And Arcia comes in and the inning ends. But the Tigers keep adding on runs, two of the six. Two in the seventh, one more in the eighth. Thank you, Jeff. And I'm Jamie Hirsch back here at Target Field with a reminder that Twins Live presented by CenturyLink is coming up right after the final out of this game. We will show you how the Tigers were able to claw their way back in the second half of the doubleheader here today. And we'll also take a breakdown of Danny Santana's quiet swing. Jack Morris and Anthony LaPanta will explain what they mean by that. And then we'll go inside the clubhouse and get manager Ron Gardenhire's reaction after this game. Dick and Burke. All right. Thank you, Jamie. Tigers lead by three, and Java Chamberlain will uh, come out of the bullpen now and pitch for the Tigers to the Twins in the eighth. Yeah, Chamberlain worked here last night, worked one inning, gave up four hits and a couple runs, 16 pitches, nine for strikes. So Chamberlain overall making his 57th relief appearance. 20 walks, three intentional, and 50 strikeouts in 50 and two thirds innings pitched. The numbers not particularly good for Chamberlain. There's Plouffe, three hits tonight. Right back to the glove on one pitch. Chamberlain gets the first out. That'll bring up Suzuki. He's 
promised earlier in the game we have the AT&T fan photo of the game. Tweet your photo. Hashtag North fan photo a chance to be shown in an upcoming broadcast brought to you by AT&T. Rod Carew's statue. Very nice. A couple of youngsters mimicking the stance. <laughs> a lot of people tried to mimic Rod's stance. Not many could hit like him. Tony uh, Gwynn no. succeeded. Here's Suzuki. And a strike from Chamberlain. Kansas City beat Texas 6 3. Unless the Twins can turn this game around. Royals will have a three game lead on the Tigers at the close of business today. One on one. Hard slider by Chamberlain there. Looks like a lumberjack out there, doesn't he? Big man. Well, you could, I suppose, see if he ever pitches for the Twins. The promotion department would roll her to the right side. Kinsler has it. Two down. Position Chamberlain next to a blue ox. Mm -hmm. well, they already tried that with Jim Tomey. That was a wonderful commercial the Twins had. Yeah, Chamberlain from Lincoln, Nebraska, out of the University of Nebraska. Yankees' uh, number one pick back in 2006. In his first season with the Tigers. Signed as a free agent over the winter. You knew this already, but he didn't have that beard with the Yankees. <laughs> no, he did not. <laughs> Two down quickly, and now Escobar 0 for 2 on the night with a walk. Strike over the inside corner. Oakland leading the Angels 1 0 for the seventh inning. John Lester pitching a shutout so far. A foul ball, two strikes. Oakland coming into play one game behind the Angels. That series in Oakland. He's had a little week and a half long hiccup while the Angels played really good baseball. Two strikes and Escobar asks for time. One and two. Saw Chamberlain the last couple of days out early with his son, hitting him in ground balls, throwing the frisbee around with him. He must be maybe I'm gonna guess his son is six, seven years old. That's what's nice about baseball. Sometimes managers allow your kids to come out and participate in your your workouts. Rough inning last night for Chamberlain, a really good one here tonight as he sets the twins down one, two, three.
linked to what's next. Last year's Cy Young Award winner. Some say he's pitching even better this year. He'll go tomorrow for the Tigers. Max Scherzer against Kyle Gibson. Now I want to see a pitcher's duel. We have yet to see a pitcher's duel in this first three games. In all offense. J.D. Martinez facing Samuel Deduno. I saw a pitcher's duel here in the final game of the Cleveland series. Corey Kluber and Phil Hughes. Had a, that was just a, a joy to watch. It was a well played game. Twins won. That might have helped my perspective on it a little bit, but we might have that type of game tomorrow. Yeah, Hughes, another great outing. Seven innings, only one run allowed, no walks again, eight strikeouts. One and one. Aduno in his second inning of relief. Ten pitches so far, seven for strikes. To center, Santana back, turning one way, then the other got there one away. The bullpen hasn't been very efficient here in tonight's game. The three run lead has been built against first Burton and then the run that the uh, Tigers got against the Duno in the eighth. Yeah, not like in game one when Presley, Swarzak, and Theobar pitched a total of four shutout innings. It's Castellanos He's had a good night at the plate, a couple of hits in his last two at bats. Big two run single his last time up. Strike one. I think that's the first strike that actually that was caught. It seems like every strike has been put into play. You know, with just 12 pitches, and he's completed seven at bats, and he's one pitch into this one. Two strikes. One and two. Angels have tied up the A's now, one apiece in the seventh. Two and two. Are due to send up Schaefer, Santana, and Dozier in the ninth against Joe Nathan, who's warming up in the Tiger pen. Same situation right now for Nathan and the Tigers. Three and two now. Holiday on deck. And Dozier backhands the ground ball. Two away. And now Holiday. Nothing wrong with the Twins lineup tonight. Five runs. Usually enough to win a ball game. Yeah, I guess especially against Justin Verlander. Yeah. Twins scored four runs in five and two thirds off of Verlander. That does not happen too often. But he's in line for the win. It would be his 11th of the year. Trevor May. And the hook for the loss. Nathan with a very high ERA, 26 saves, six blown saves. You know, this has been uh, quite the offensive homestand, and in a way, the losses have been uh, uh, more indicative of that than the wins, believe it or not. Twins lost. Uh, 
the opening game of the homestand, 6 5 to Kansas City. They scored five runs right away, but uh, lost the ball game. Then they lost a ball game 12 to 6 to Kansas City, 6 to 4, 7 to 5 to Cleveland. And now five more runs up on the board, so the exception of the 5 0 shutout by TJ House, Twins have uh, scored a lot of runs in mean, just about every game. A 1 2 3 ninth inning. We'll see what the Twins can get done against former Twin Joe Nathan. It's a three run lead going to the bottom of the ninth inning. The Tiger closer, Joe Nathan, in his first year with Detroit. And it's been a very unsettling year for Nathan, who was so good for so many years with the Twins. Good down in Texas. But the number's just not what Tiger fans uh, were hoping for. Yeah, 26 saves for Joe Nathan and 32 save opportunities, making his 50th relief appearance. A high earned run average of 5.28. He's the only Tiger re reliever who did not pitch last night. And he's in tonight. He'll face Schaefer, Santana, and Dozier. Nathan, of course, the all time twin save leader with 260. Went to Texas, had two very good years where he saved a total of 80 saves in two years. Then came over to Detroit signing a two year contract. The goal here try to get guys on base and get Vargas and Arcia up to the plate here in the ninth. Schaefer takes high ball one. Yeah, the walks high for Nathan 25 walks in 46 innings. Don Kelly in third base. Davis moving to left. And Herrera in center. Showing bunt and taking ball two. Last week in Detroit, the fans who've been on Nathan were on him again after a disappointing outing or during a disappointing outing. Nathan ended up getting the save, but he made a flippant gesture to the fans, two and one, which he immediately apologized for. Can you imagine that, you of all people? I can't believe he would do something <laughs> like that. <laughs> Two and one. Bouncer right side. There's a base hit to start the inning. Schaefer picking up his first hit, finding that gap between first and second. Well, 
Lead off single. And now Santana with two hits tonight. Two more hits tonight for Santana and the average up to 324. Popped up to left. Davis. One away. We've seen Santana retired on one pitch very often. Just got underneath that fastball, create the fly ball out. And now Dozier. Dozier with a double off the glove of J.D. Martinez leading off the seventh. He came in to score. Two more runs scored for Dozier tonight. Continuing to lead the American League. Breaking ball over. One and one. Nathan in his career, 367 saves. First 260 of those came with the Twins. Schaefer goes. No chance. No stolen base. Schaefer is eighth stolen base in nine attempts. Stay out of the double play. Holiday going out to Nathan to make sure they know what sign they're using with a runner at second now. And the count one and two to Dozier. You need another base runner. Then anything can happen. Two and two. Nathan's given up five home runs in 46 innings. Two and two. Three and two. Mauer on deck. Nathan always pitching out there. Just making sure that hat is on right. Full count to Dozier. Found. Tigers kept bolstering their late inning bullpen, picking up Soria at 17 saves for Texas, and then he got hurt. Joel Hanrahan was signed, but won't pitch for the Tigers this year. He hasn't recovered well enough from Tommy John surgery. He threw his last pitch against the Twins, and now Jim Johnson also had it. Don't be surprised it's another fastball. Three run lead. Don't want to walk anybody. To the left field corner and out of the reach of Davis. Schaefer will score. Dozier with another double off the glove of the Detroit left fielder. Just a different left fielder. And the Twins get the time run to the play. Oh, pitch left up, and again Dozier hammering it down in that left field corner. Davis gave a good effort, but came up short. Back-to-back -back doubles for Dozier in his two last plate appearances. 
And Dozier driving in his 57th run as Schaefer scores. And now Nathan, or excuse me, Maurer will face Nathan with Maurer representing the tying run. And behind him, Vargas. Maurer two for three, a pair of singles against Nathan. Ball one. Three of them hit here at Target Field. Last one coming on Sunday against Jeremy Guthrie, Kansas City. Strike called on the outside corner. Two extra base hits for the Twins in this series after Dozier's double. On the outside corner again, and Maurer with a look back at Guccione. Like he took something off a fastball right there. Like a two seamer that is the outer half of the plate. One and two to Mauer. <laughs> nearly hit him, nearly got to the backstop. Two and two. Looks like you tried to quick pitch Mauer right there, the breaking ball in the dirt. Six time All Star Joe Nathan, now 39 years old. Four times as a twin, he made the All Star team. Two and two to Joe Mao. Grounded to Kinsler. It's out number two. Dozier to third. And now Nathan will face Kenny Vargas. Hit it sharply, but right at Ian Kinsler at second base. Vargas has had, by his standards, a quiet night. One for four, a single, and a run batted in. A pair of doubles this afternoon drove in five runs. This is his 22nd major league game. He has 23 runs batted in. Four home runs, all coming as a left handed hitter for Vargas. That foul, off speed pitch. And more and more pitchers are doing that to Vargas rather than feeding him a first pitch fastball. Third, tying run is at the plate. One and one. If Vargas keeps the game alive, Arcia would hit next. Kinsler with another chance. 
Nathan gives up a run but gets the save. Justin Verlander not sharp but he got the win and the Tigers win a game that they desperately had to have here tonight. Anthony the Twins scoring six runs again here tonight with six runs in a loss. The Tigers get enough to get a victory tonight. Salvage a split in the doubleheader and keep pace with the Royals in the AL Central. We'll update you on that race. We'll preview tomorrow's series finale next on Twins Live presented by Century Lake.